She was no longer dressed in the casual jeans and t-shirts she had worn to school that day. Her shoulders and arms were now covered with golden armour, decorated with the same strange symbols and writings which had covered the box containing her tiara. Around her waist was a finely woven gold belt, which was also covered by the same mysterious symbols. She had no weapons, but it was clear that the rainbow of light had somehow transformed her from the schoolgirl she was in reality into a magnificent warrior princess of Batasia. Wow, what a buzz. Where am I? She thought out loud. With a puff of white smoke, Book with his tassel standing upright reappeared, opened in front of her, revealing a single word, Bertasia. Oh my gosh, shouted Bellasini. This is really freaky. What's all the fuss about? Squawked a little squeaky voice from behind her. Spinning around, she caught sight of the most amazing purple bird, wearing a bright yellow jacket and a back-to-front baseball cap. The cap had a propeller on top, which the bird seemed to use to hover in front of her like a helicopter. Who are you, and why are you wearing the armour of the royal family of Vitasia? shrieked the little bird. You talk, replied Bellasin. Well, the cat didn't get my tongue, if that's what you mean, cheekily replied the bird, who had now perched himself comfortably atop Book, still floating in front of the princess. Although he did have a good try once, the bird continued, rubbing his little wing across his beak. Book's tassel irately moved to one side and stared intently at this strange little bird which had been rude enough to sit on him. Is that your neck? curiously asked the bird, scanning up and down the length of the cord that attached the little imp to the book. It makes E.T.'s neck look stumpy. Here's one for you. Why do giraffes have such long necks? The bird waited for a second before continuing. You give in? Because their heads are so far away. <laughs> Even Bellasini could not help but laugh at such a silly joke. However, Book did not find this attempt at humour the least bit funny and continued to glare straight at this impish little bird. Then, without warning, Book disappeared in a puff of smoke, causing the bird to tumble swiftly towards the ground. He was only just saved from a nasty landing by Bellasini's quick reaction. You must be Zack, giggled Bellasini, lifting him up to take a closer look. Gran has told me all about you. Gran? Who is Gran? responded the little bird once again using his propeller to hover in front of Bellasini. And more importantly, who are you? Bellasini. But my friends just call me Sini. Hmm. I can't be 100% sure, but I think my grand came to Vatasia many years ago and married the king, or something like that. Your grand is the queen? Where is she? responded Zach searching behind Bellasini for any sign of the queen. She's still at home in reality. Bellasini explained all that had occurred at Gran's house. She told Zack how she had found book in Gran's library, and it was he who had given her the bracelets, which somehow allowed her to travel between the two worlds. She finished by telling Zack that Gran thought a person named Glitch, living in Vitasia, may be trying to ruin her family and friends' lives by sending computer viruses to reality. Pacing up and down on a fallen log, Zack explained to Bellasini how upset the king was when the queen disappeared. He immediately stepped down from the throne and appointed Ambassador Glitch to take over ruling the kingdom while he travelled to the far corners of the Tasia 
in search of the lost queen. He is a very wicked man, princess, continued Zack, shaking his head. He has brought only darkness and despair to Vatasia, and it would appear he now wishes to impose this same doom and gloom on reality. But how did you get here, princess? Before the queen disappeared, she talked of a strange machine that had somehow allowed her to travel from her world to Vatasia. I'm not quite sure, replied Bellasini, scratching her head. The machine no longer exists. All I did was tap these two bracelets together and wish to be in Vatasia. No sooner had she finished speaking, than Book reappeared in a puff of smoke, causing Zack to lose his footing and tumble backward off the log. Book's bobbles stood up out of his painters and leaned over the log to view Zack lying head first on the ground. The bobble and tassels then began to wobble and shake in a very strange way, as Zack tried desperately to climb back up onto the log. Book, that was not very nice, scolded Bellasini. If I didn't know better, I would guess you were laughing at poor Zack's fool. Book immediately ceased his giggling actions and turned to face Bellasini as if nothing had happened. So what have you come to tell me? Book beckoned Bellasini to read the words on his open pages. He explained she had wished to be in Vitesa as she touched the two bracelets together. If she wanted to return, she only had to wish it while again touching the bracelets together. Oh my gosh, shrieked Bellasini. I forgot I left Gran alone in her library. She's not very well at the moment, so I should return to reality as soon as I can. Why don't you come back with me, Zack? It would make Gran ever so happy to see you again. See the Queen again? Is it safe? asked Zack, rubbing his little chin. Bellasini posed the question to Book, who slowly lifted one corner of his cover, as if in deep thought. The words, Zack, do you wish to travel with Bellasini back to reality? appeared on his pages. Of course I wish to go with the princess to visit the queen. On hearing Zack's answer, Book's Bobble nodded vigorously in Bellasini's direction. Well, let's give it a go, shouted Bellasini. She immediately stood up, raised her hands in the air and clashed the two bracelets together. I wish, oh how I wish, Zack and I were back in reality. As the colorful beam of light once again emerged from the bracelets, Zack started to have second thoughts about his decision. Hey, maybe we should think about this a little longer. But before Bellasini could do anything to stop it, she found herself back in Gran's library, in the clothes she had worn to school that day. <laughs>